Parts of America are looking more like a ghost town as government leaders across the country are making sweeping changes to combat the coronavirus outbreak. Governor Gavin Newsom suggesting that people 65 and older stay home and that bars and schools remain closed while restaurants limit their capacity by half. Joining us now for some insight on the novel coronavirus and whether these measures are an appropriate response is Dr. Rina Marfadia. Thanks for talking with us, doctor. Hey, how are you? Good. So we've shifted away from prevention and are now in full on mitigation mode as a nation. What exactly does that mean and how can people better understand where we're at with this coronavirus? So initially when we had first heard about it, we were trying to prevent it from coming, which is where we were trying to control some of the travel as well as screen people who had traveled. However, we've now started seeing community spread of the disease, which means um, we have it in the community. It's not just people who have traveled or the original guidelines which were provided to um, have tested. So now it's important to make sure that we take measures to prevent community spread just like we would do every year for the flu. However, now we're doing it for the COVID-19. So that means that the coronavirus is here and the number of those infected is expected to be much more than what is being reported. Is that correct? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, we don't have very extensive testing. Because of that, the numbers that we're seeing are based on the tests that are available and people who are showing symptoms. So the actual number of people who may be asymptomatic may be higher uh, than what we are seeing. So for people who are a bit confused by this response versus accepting uh, the coronavirus just like we would the seasonal flu pandemic, how can you explain the difference in how A, they're easily spread and B, the mortality rate between the two, or is that too soon to tell right now? Um, there, We have some information. They are different. They're just structurally, they're two different viruses. How uh, they're uh, symptoms wise, they could be similar because they're viral infections. The coronavirus um, is a newer virus, which means we don't have as much information about it. What we do know is that it's highly infectious. Um, the current data shows that it has a higher mortality rate compared to the flu. So the flu is somewhere between 0.1 to 0.2 percent. Right now, this is being reported anywhere from one to five percent with most of the reports saying between one and two percent mortality with the coronavirus. So to get a little more context, if you're looking at uh, one in a thousand versus one to five in a hundred is the difference between the flu and the co coronavirus mortality. So it looks like the coronavirus is more deadly than the flu already. Right now, it seems like that. Correct. So given this new form of this virus, we're still learning more, of course, every day. And we actually just learned today that the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine is ready for clinical trial as of Monday. What do you see the challenge being here in having this as a pushing point of a panic while we try to get a handle on all this? What? to make sure that the coronavirus, um, the vaccine is actually effective and also to be able to produce it at a scale where everyone that needs it gets it. We also need to make sure that we are approaching it in a systematic way where the highest risk people are getting it and then we try to get it to the entire general public. Um, we still don't have it available, so it's going to be hard to say what happens with it. Yeah, that'll take some time, of course, and we're also seeing people clear out store shelves and many guidelines for what is being called social distancing at this time. And in uh, more technical terms, I believe, is that leveling the curve. What do you make of this aggressive response? When we talk about leveling the curve, we want to make sure that the number of cases that we see per day at are a rate that can be handled at hospitals and clinics safely. So you, we don't want to overwhelm the system that we have or break it by having a large number of patients coming up every day. By social distancing, what we're trying to do is limiting our social interactions, keeping into our bubbles so that we can make sure or slow down getting the coronavirus. Um, that way, when you do go to the hospital, you're able to get the full care that you need. Um, we also want to make sure that we don't have such a large number of coronavirus cases at the same time that we aren't able to pay attention to other medical emergencies which also need medical care and that not all our 
all the resources aren't taken up just to manage the emergency of coronavirus. Given the rate of this infection that we've seen already happen first in China, now Europe, which is being called the new China, and slowly as we are seeing uh, more cases being confirmed across the United States, what do you think about where we are in terms of uh, overwhelming our medical community? Do you see that happening? So if you go online, you'll commonly see this graph where it shows that we are about two weeks behind where Italy was. Um, so today we're where Italy was two weeks ago. Um, again, we have limited testing, so we don't know if those are true numbers or whether we have more asymptomatic and healthy patients out there who do actually have the virus and are just not tested. So the current numbers do reflect that the way our growth is going, we're going in the direction as Italy. Um, we're, we're hoping to do is by doing some of the social distancing and limiting contact with people to slow, slow it down so we can have a plan of how to approach this. We can have, we get ourselves some time in terms of medications, getting resources, getting beds, and just being a little more prepared. And we're hearing that testing, for example, is a major resource that has not been made as readily available as Americans would have liked to see. Is that your understanding as well? Correct. Right now we don't have enough testing. So why is the population as a whole being pushed to keep away from one another rather than just the vulnerable, meaning the elderly and the sick? Because a lot of us could be asymptomatic carriers and then we have vulnerable at home and we may be carrying it home. When we stick to our bubble, we're trying to contain it, there, either contain it within that bubble or we're trying to not bring it into our bubble. So it's important to kind of stay where you are to limit the spread or to not get it. So how close are we to what we're seeing in Europe with these lockdowns and having complete towns shut down? I don't know how that would work with our system. Uh, I think it may go state by state or city by city. It really will be more of a local decision. And do you anticipate this getting worse before it gets any better? And what does that really mean for us? What can we expect in the coming weeks or even months? I feel like there's a lot of unknowns at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that if we, as we see the trend over the next two weeks, we'll have a little more information. I do feel like it will get worse. There is a lot of panic right now, and we are going out a little more in terms of stocking things up and getting things together, which may increase the social contact. I also feel like right now is the time when people are probably trying to return home from whenever they're traveling. Once we're able to get into a place where we are stable, we're not moving too much, hopefully we'll be able to control it a little better. And again, any advice for people who are trying to prevent from either contracting the coronavirus or spreading that disease if they do have it? Mostly isolate yourself make sure you practice good hand hygiene. I think I touched my face during this interview. Don't touch <laughs> your face. Uh, I know it's really hard to do, but some of those things are just very important. Not hugging, you know, distancing yourself in general. You're watching Cronon, the Bay Area streaming news 24 seven.